pounds, five grams, and 26 minims. I think that's enough from the X2 container, Court. Have you checked the amount with your notes? Uh, yes, uh, 2% X2 plus 1% X6, 2% CM plus 3% OM. All right, Hugo, I've got it. I'll switch off the burner. That's it. Now, what is it, Kurt? I, I can't breathe. Quick, get to the window. Where's that pestle? Get to the window. Uh, that's better. Thanks. Thanks. Are you all right? I'm, I'm all right, Hugo. Breathe in the fresh air. Take deep gulps of it. Uh, I'm okay now. But that was a near thing, Hugo. Yes. The gas is a killer, all right. We'll have to go careful with it. It's got just what it takes. Just a whiff of it. That spells sudden death. The BBC presents A Case for Dr. Morell. Another adventure by Ernest Dudley. With Cecil Parker as the famous Dr. Morell and Sheila Sim as his secretary, Miss Frail. The Poisoned Air. Hello, this is Dr. Morell's house. Is that Miss Frail? Professor Russell here. Oh, hello, Professor. Good evening. How's Dr. Morell? Busy, I expect. Uh, well, he is rather busy. He's working with the dictaphone at the moment. Uh, shall I get him for you? I don't want to disturb him. What do you think are the chances that he can come down early tomorrow? Tomorrow? It's Saturday, Professor. Is it? Uh, oh, yes, so it is. Uh, I think you'd better hold on while I get the doctor. If you're sure it's not bothering oh, him. Oh, no. No, he'd like to speak to you, I know. Uh, the old Scandinavian tribes uh, used flies as oracles, and a certain South American tribe uh, buries the murdered victim's corpse and smooths the earth round the grave. Uh, the first insect that runs over it uh, shows the direction in which to look for the murderer. Uh, yet another tribe uh, claims to detect a murderer in a similar way. A watch is kept on the victim's grave, and the first animal to cross it is followed in the belief uh, that it will lead to the murderer. Oh, Dr. Morell. What is it, Miss Frail? It's Professor Russell on the phone. Uh, let me switch off the machine. The professor wants to know if you can go down and see him tomorrow. Oh, that suggests that he's concluded his work on his poisonous gas. Poisonous gas? Ooh, how horrid. It is intended not for human beings, but uh, other pests. Oh. I'll speak to him. Uh, hello, Professor. Dr. Morell here. Mm, who's that? Uh, Dr. Morell. Oh. Uh, you wanted to speak to me, I believe. Dr. Morell? Oh, of course. I'm so sorry. My mind was wandering, I'm afraid. I, I hope I had disturbed you. Uh, what do you want? I wondered if you could pop down. I want to demonstrate this gas. I've really got it to work at last. Congratulations. Uh, what time would you suggest I come down? Could you be here by nine o'clock in the morning? It's Saturday, you see. I realize that. And I've got a wedding later on. A wedding? What's that, Doctor? Somebody getting married? Quiet, Miss Fraser. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I've got to go to it. It's a nuisance and all that, but I'm getting married. Well, in that case, uh, perhaps it would be as well if you are present. I'd forgotten uh, until I was reminded just now by my prospective wife. Uh, who is she, may I ask? Or, or have you forgotten that? Uh, uh, Miss uh, Goodwin, uh, you know, my secretary. Oh, yes, yes. Now, what about tomorrow? Can you get here? Uh, very well, by nine o'clock. And bring that young woman of yours with you, if you like. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Miss Frail. I'm sure she'd be delighted. Uh, goodbye, Professor. Uh, goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow at night. What are you smiling at, Doctor? The idea of someone getting married. <laughs> Professor Russell really is the popular conception of an absent-minded professor. Oh, I think he's rather nice. Quite attractive in a kind of way. Uh, what kind of way, Miss Frail? Uh, well, you know. I'm afraid I don't. Uh, however, I'm, I'm sure his secretary, Miss Goodwin, does. What do you mean? Uh, they are to be married tomorrow. Oh, how wonderful. I imagine it will be wonderful if he remembers to be there. Uh, that's what comes of dedicating yourself to your work. Miss Goodwin, she's awfully attractive. I can't resist wondering whether he ever noticed it. Well, he has, Dr. Murray, hasn't he? And better late than never. You sound a trifle tense, Miss Frail. Is anything the matter? Oh, Nothing at all, Doctor, nothing at all. Uh, for a moment, I was beginning to wonder if... What? Oh, nothing at all, Miss Frail, nothing at all. Uh, Professor Russell has invited you to accompany me tomorrow morning. Mm. Weren't you saying that we'd have to be there about nine o'clock? Yes. 
Oh, he lives this side of Guildford. We shall have to leave about eight. I hadn't forgotten, Miss Frail. I'm not absent-minded as it happens. Uh, no, Doctor, I know. I wonder... You wonder what? Well, I was thinking about his assistant. Uh, the professor omitted to mention him. Oh, you mean that dark, good-looking young man from Vienna or, or wherever it was? Kurt Emanuel, his name is. Kurt Emanuel, yes, that's it. Come to think of it, uh, I rather thought he had his eye on Miss Goodwin. Uh, professor Russell is the much more brilliant chemist. <laughs> you think that's why she preferred him to Mr. Emanuel? Because he's a clever chemist. My dear Miss Frail, I have no intention of entering into a discussion with you on the subject of what attracts one female member of the human species to the male, or vice versa. No, but why not? Uh, because I have more important matters to attend to in the study. Oh, dear. Just for a moment, I thought I'd got him there. Hugo? Oh, hello, Bella. I've been talking to Dr. Morell. Not to ask him to be best man, I hope. Of course not, my dear. We've already asked Kurt. I'm glad you remembered that, anyway. I'm sorry, Bella, about being so absent-minded. Did you mention to him you've forgotten that you and I are being married tomorrow? Or mention it to who, my dear? Dr. Morell, of course. Haven't you just been speaking to him on the phone? Yes. Yes, I told you. I did mention that I'd forgotten about tomorrow. Uh, that's why I asked him down early. Hugo, I suppose you are going through with it, aren't you? I'm afraid you're overworked, Bella. We're both overworked. We've been going at the job non-stop for several months now. You haven't answered my question. It hardly requires an answer. You know that I'm marrying you tomorrow. You know that I'm going to do my best to make you happy. I don't think I could take it if you let me know. What are you talking about? Whatever put the idea in your head? Quiet is Kurt. Hello, Hugo. Ah, oh, Kurt. You just off? Yes, aren't you going home, Bella? Haven't you both done enough for today? He wants these last notes before tomorrow. I don't know why you're rushing it this way. I'd like to have it all cleared up before the wedding. Why not postpone it? Thank you, I'm sure. Not all of your jokes are in the best taste, Kurt. I'm sorry. I'm going to the laboratory. See you in the morning, then. I shan't be back till the early hours. Have a good party. I will. So long, Hugo. So long, Kurt. Come along, Bella. Just coming. I hope you won't miss all your sleep, Kurt. Why do you care? I want you to look your best for the wedding tomorrow. Now who's making jokes in bad taste? I don't know what you mean. You know I'd give anything to get out of it. I'm only doing it to please Hugo so that he won't suspect that I'm in love with you. Please don't talk like that. For the last time, won't you listen to me? There's your arrogance again. Just because you're in love with me or say you are... You... you know I love you more than anything in the world. And so I must love you in return. You can't believe it. I should turn you down for Hugo. I know he's got money. He can give you security. That old Viennese charm creeping through. I think perhaps we'd better not discuss it anymore. There's something behind this. Some motive for what you're doing. Why don't you confide in me? After all, I might be able to save you sacrificing yourself. I can wait... How dare you talk to me in this horrible way? Put on airs if you like. But it doesn't fool me. I know you don't really love Hugo. You really love me. You conceited fool. I don't like being called that. And I don't like having to listen to any more of your rubbish. Good night. Good night, Bella. All right, the future Mrs. Russell. I'll see about your little game. <laughs> Can't see where I'm going. Absolutely plastered with moths and maybugs. Ah, that's better. Hello. Who's this wandering all over the road? Why, it's Miss Goodwin. Are you all right, Miss Goodwin? Oh, hello, Sergeant Hammond. What are you doing out at this time of night? Been to a party? No, I haven't. I've just left the professor. Working late hours, aren't you? So are you. Oh, I'm just back from the police dance. Uh, get in, Miss Goodwin, and I'll see you safely home. Oh, that is kind of you. I was almost falling asleep. Oh, so that's what it was. I saw you weaving about the road a bit. Quinn. You'll have to train Professor Russell better than this when you're Mrs. Russell. Yes, I will. The village is full of the wedding tomorrow. Oh, how nice of them. And to think your future husband's kept you working till past midnight. 
He hasn't got very much idea of time. Well, you'd better sleep late in the morning. Not much hope of that. I've got a batch of stuff to type. Cool. What a slave driver he is. He'll be wanting you to take the typewriter on your honeymoon. <laughs> I don't even know if there'll be one. Oh, dear me, dear me, Miss Goodwin. This is me, Sergeant Hammond. You can let yourself in, all right? Oh, yes. My landlady's used to me being back late. Uh, she's heard us there's a light in the window. Always likes to bolt up after me. Thank you so much for the lift, Sergeant. A pleasure. And very best wishes for tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss Goodwin. Mr. Manuel. Good morning, Mrs. Atkins. Off for your early morning walk as per usual, sir. I'll be out for about half an hour. It's a lovely morning and just right for the wedding. Real orange blossom, though, you might say. Yes, Mrs. Atkins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Better get the breakfast if you can call a tea and a bit of toast breakfast. Mm -hmm. Oh, half past eight, I must get a move on. Professor, I brought you breakfast. Fast asleep. Hmm, better go in. Good morning. Here's your breakfast, Professor. Come on now, wake up. It's your wedding day. Wake up, Professor. Oh, Professor. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. What shall I do? Better phone for the doctor. Should I try and catch Mr. Emmanuel? Oh, dear, oh, dear, what shall I do? Oh, was that someone at the door? Who could that be at a time like this? All right, I'm coming. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Good morning. Professor Russell's expecting us. He's dead. It's Dr. Morell and Miss... What? He's dead. Professor Russell's dead. What are you saying? I just found him. I'm Mrs. Atkins, the daily... I just arrived and I took him in his breakfast. Not that he has much, just a cup of tea and a bit of toast. Where is he? Upstairs in bed where I found him. Come along, Miss Field. Yes, Doc. I knocked and he didn't reply. I thought he was sleepy. And then it's been his wedding day and that's how I went in. The woman was right, I fear, Miss Field. Is he dead? Yes. He must have been dead several hours. Somewhat curious. What, Dr. Moore? He has the appearance of having succumbed to carbon monoxide poisoning. You mean gas poisoning? Yes. Well, there's no gas fire or anything in the room. I had already observed that. The window is closed. Oh, and it was a warm night last night. And these two glass containers on the table over here. Oh, what a horrid coloured liquid this one is. And the other one has been emptied. Dr. Morell, it's the poisonous gas. Possibly, Miss Rail. Fancy Professor Russell carrying on his experiments up here. Is he? Is he? Um... I'm afraid Professor Russell's dead. Oh, dear. Then I might just as well take his breakfast tray away. Uh, he certainly won't be requiring it. Not that it was much of a breakfast. Only a cup of tea and a bit of toast. What should we do, Doctor? I was wondering where the others were. Uh, Miss Goodwin? Oh, Miss Goodwin will be here any minute now. And Mr. Emanuel? He's out for his usual walk. I met him as I came in. Where are you, Mrs. Atkins? Oh, that's Miss Goodwin, sir. She's here. What shall I tell her? I'll speak to her. Uh, wait here, Miss Frail. Oh. You, you needn't remain by the bed if you prefer not to. Well, I... Uh, look out at the garden. That'll provide you with a more pleasant spectacle. Yes, Doctor. Oh, poor Miss Goodwin. And she was going to marry him today. Mrs. Atkins, are you there? She's on her way, sir, upstairs. Very well. Uh, Miss Goodwin. Oh, it's you, Dr. Morell. I hope I didn't surprise you too much. Of course, Hugo said you'd be coming down first thing this morning. Have you seen him? I have. What is it? What's, what's the matter? I fear, Miss Goodwin, you must prepare yourself. Something's but happened, then. Hugo? Professor Russell is dead. But it can't be true. He was feeling perfectly all right last night when I left him. I'm afraid it is true. Let me see him. Uh, Miss Frail is in there. Uh, she came down with me. How did he die? He looked... He looked... Uh, that remains to be seen. Possibly a heart attack. Although his appearance indicates something else. Oh, Dr. Morell, won't you sit down? Thanks. Uh, can I get you something? No, Miss Frey. I... Doctor, I can't understand it. I, I was working with him late last night, and he was perfectly normal. 
But you yourself know. Well, I spoke to the professor when he phoned. He sounded in perfectly good health, I agree. You say that you were with him late last night? There was a last batch of notes to be done, and he wanted to get it over with. Uh, where is Mr. Emmanuel? Good. Well, he'll be out on his morning walk. I'll ask Mrs. Atkins if she's seen him. Uh, never mind that now. He'll be back presently. Doesn't he know about Professor Russell? It would appear not. There's no reason why he should. You see, Doctor, he always goes for a walk first thing before starting work for the day. Oh, that explains it. Uh, there is every indication, Miss Goodwin, uh, that the professor uh, may have had an accident. Accident? Uh, the poisonous gas on which he was working. <gasps> the glass containers? What are they doing here? Uh, that question occurred to me. One's been emptied into the other. How do you know? The color of the liquid. That would produce the poisonous gas. Uh, that was what I was wondering. Uh, is it lethal to human beings? In its present form... Hugo and Kurt were working on it further to make it non-fatal to human beings. Uh, Kurt uh, Emmanuel shared the secret of its manufacture with the professor? He first brought it to Hugo. That was why he came to live here, so that they could experiment together. I understand. How am I going to break it to him? Uh, to what do you attribute the presence of these containers here? I don't know. He was very absent-minded, wasn't he? Never with his job. I know he forgot about our wedding today, but he wouldn't forget about his work. Uh, when did you last see these containers? In the laboratory last night. Can you explain their presence here? Perhaps he brought them up with him to make last-minute adjustments. Just now, you said you couldn't understand it. I can't, but how else could they have got up here? Uh, there's no one in the house at night except Professor Russell and Mr. Emmanuel. Kurt went out to a party at Guildford after dinner and told us not to expect him back to the early hours. Did the professor invariably sleep with the windows closed? Yes. As a matter of fact, I came up here and put on the reading lamp beside his bed. And the insects started flying in from the dark, so I closed the window. When I left, Hugo was on his way up to bed. That sounds as if someone's outside in the drive. It looks like Mr. Emmanuel. Yes, it is, Kurt. I, I, shall I tell him what happened? Uh, why not let him come up and see for himself? Shock. It might upset him. You prefer to break the news to him? Might be better. Very well. I'll catch him in case he meets Mrs. Atkins. Where is she be? In the kitchen, but if she hears him... I think I might have a word with her. Oh, Oh, yes. I'll hurry and see Kurt. Uh, Miss Freya. Yes, Doctor? Uh, when you finish scrutinizing that dead moth on the windowsill... Look, there's a, there's a whole lot of insects here. Naturally, they died at the same time that Professor Russell did. Doctor, what do you mean? Uh, Miss Freya, if you'd pick up the telephone and ask for the police. The police, Dr. Morell? You mean that... It's... Just ask for the police, Miss Freya. Oh, oh yes, Doctor. Um, uh, shall I use a handkerchief to hold the receiver? <laughs> and if it amuses you to do so, Miss well, Frail. I meant in case there are fingerprints. If there are, they won't prove anything one way or the other. And wrapping a handkerchief around the receiver will merely serve to smudge them. Oh, but I always thought... Uh, your head is forever plagued with popular fallacies, Miss Frail. Uh, just pick up the phone and get the police. Yes, Dr. Morell. And while you're attending to that task, I'll have a word with Mrs. Atkins. Oh, yes, Dr. Morell. Uh, oh, there's Miss Goodwin and Mr. Emanuel in the garden. Uh, so I have observed them. Telling him about poor Professor Russell. No doubt she is doing that. Stella, I can't believe this has happened. I don't know what to believe. What do you mean? It was perfectly all right last night. No. You must keep a grip on yourself. But how could it have happened? Why should he have got the stuff in his bedroom? Dr. Morell's up there, is he? He went to speak to Mrs. Atkins, but he'll go back upstairs. Miss Frail's there. What's he want with Mrs. Atkins? I don't know. He just said he'd like to speak to her. I don't see what this has got to do with him. He was invited down as a guest, not as Hugo's doctor. What does it matter? He's here, and he is a doctor. I'd better see what's going on. All right, let's go. Poor Bella. I'm so dreadfully sorry. Please believe I'll do everything I can to help you. There were didn't get no reply. Just Doctor, I went in and there the professor was. Uh, was there anything about the room that you noticed particularly? Uh, the bedside lamp was off? That's right. And the curtains were drawn open like they always are. Uh, the windows were closed? That's right. He all slept with his windows closed, winter and summer. Uh, you invariably called him at the same time? Yes. Uh, where was Mr. Emmanuel when this happened? Well, I've seen him just before I went upstairs. He was going out for his usual morning walk. You noticed nothing untoward about him? Oh, he looked a bit washed out like, but that's no wonder it's seen the time he went to bed last night, or rather this morning. Indeed. Mm, half past three it was, just before daylight. Uh, what were you yourself doing at that hour? Oh, it wasn't me, it was my son. He took some girl home from the police dance and dallied. You know what young lads are nowadays? Not only nowadays, Mrs. Atkins. I don't know what that's coming to. Uh, your son, sir, Mr. Emmanuel returning home. That's right. Overtook him, he did, in his car. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel's car, that is. 
and my son saw him drive in here. When you saw him this morning, he appeared not to realize that the professor was dead? Well, if he did, he didn't say anything to me about it. No, of course he didn't know. I'll, well, I mean to say... Uh, thank you. You've been most helpful. Oh, that sounds like Mr. Manuel now. Just come in with Miss Goodwin. I heard them. They're going upstairs. I will follow them. Dr. Morel, it was the gas that killed him. We both knew from our experiments that it was lethal. It nearly got me once in the laboratory. Hugo saved my life by smashing the window. But what was it doing here in his bedroom? He must have brought it upstairs to try an experiment with it, I suppose. Has he ever done this kind of thing before? He was pretty absent-minded. He often worked late on his notes up here. Uh, Miss Goodwin said that late last night when she left him, he had completed his work. Explained we were supposed to be married today, and he wanted the job completely tied up. You worked very closely with Professor Russell on this experiment, didn't you, Mr. Emanuel? It was my idea originally. A form of gas to exterminate agricultural pests, rodents, and so forth. But it was Hugo who developed it so that it could be a workable proposition. I knew as much about it as he did, but he was the senior partner, as you might say. And when you left him last evening, you had no inkling that this could happen? No. Why should I have? You are not suggesting it's suicide, are you? I'm not in a position uh, to suggest anything. I'm merely asking a few questions uh, so that we may know what to tell the police when they arrive. The police? Uh, Miss Frail has telephoned for them. Have you not, Miss Frail? Yes, they're on their way. Is it necessary to bring them in, Doctor? It is the duty of the coroner to investigate the death of any person when informed that such death has been sudden, violent, or unnatural. But why should Hugo have committed suicide? He had everything to live for. That's what I don't understand. He had succeeded in his work. We were going to be married. I never said that it was suicide. It must have been an accident. That's what it was after I'd gone last night. He must have thought something he wanted to work on and brought the two containers up here. I'm pretty sure it was something like that. How long would the gas remain in the atmosphere? A matter of a few minutes. That was one of its features, which made it convenient for handling. Well, there's a car going up outside. That'll be Sergeant Hammond. I, I met him last night. Did you, Miss Goodwin? Yes, he gave me a lift home. What time was that? About 12 o'clock. I see. I'll go and let him in. Very well, Miss Goodwin. Uh, we'll remain up here. Gilford police about this. Looks like a serious business. You mean a coroner's inquest? Dr. Morell has already told us about that. How long, Dr. Morell, would you say he's been dead? A death was instantaneous and must have ensued somewhere between midnight and the early hours of this morning. Thanks, Doctor. I left him just about 12 o'clock and he was going to bed. That's right, Miss Goodwin. I saw you and gave you a lift home. And a long day you'd had of it by the sound of things. Uh, when you left him, Miss Goodwin... He appeared normal? Absolutely. There had been no quarrel between you? Not really, only that earlier on in the evening I snapped at him over his absent-mindedness. He'd almost forgotten about the wedding. I know, yes. He mentioned it to me on the telephone. And there was no reason why I should carry out any further experiments with this stuff? Nothing that I can think of. Uh, what ideas have you got, Mr. Emmanuel? Frankly, I wouldn't like to say... He might easily have had a sudden fresh idea and decided to try it out in practice. Would he not have conducted any further experiments in his laboratory? Yes, he would. But something's just occurred to me. Uh, what's that? Those insects lying on the window ledge yes, there. Yes, I noticed them. They're all dead. Uh, that's what I'm getting at. Supposing Hugo spotted them and thought it was a good opportunity to tie out the stuff. He went downstairs, brought it up here, and it worked all right. But not only on the insects, on himself as well. Oh, how awful. Ah, you may have got something there, Mr. Emmanuel. It's only just occurred to me. I don't say it's what actually happened. Uh, there is one piece of evidence which proves conclusively that what you suggested did not, in fact, happen. What's that? What do you mean, Doctor? Uh, the position of the body. In bed, the clothes drawn over it in an attitude of sleep. Everything points to the fact that far from his having any part in what brought about his death, he was taken completely unawares. That's true enough. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, your observation regarding the dead insects is illuminating. I am reminded of some anthropological studies I'm making of a certain uh, uh, South American tribe which buries the victim of a murder and then watches the grave for the first ant which crawls over it. Uh, the, the direction it takes points to the assassin. I don't see what all this has got to do with poor Hugo's death. Don't you, Miss Goodwin? All this mumbo-jumbo about detecting a murderer after all... Who said anything about this being murder? I am saying it now. Dr. Morell. 
What do you mean, Doctor? It has already been proved that Professor Russell was taken unawares by the gas which killed him, thus removing the possibility of either accident or suicide. Miss Goodwin is emphatic that when she left him last night at midnight, he was alive and well. Of course he was. Both glass containers holding the component liquids, uh, which when added together produced the gas, were in their proper place in the laboratory. They were certainly there when I went. Who then removed them? Brought them up here for the express purpose of murdering Professor Russell. This is horrible. Wherein lies the significance of the dead insects. I still don't get it. Miss Goodwin has established an alibi uh, with none other than yourself. You took her home at about midnight. And I went straight to bed. My landlady can swear to that. On the other hand, Mr. Emanuel returned at approximately half past three this morning, uh, just at daybreak. I don't remember saying it, but it is true. Uh, Mrs. Atkins' son, who had attended the local police dance, saw you. Mrs. Atkins' boy, that's right. I, I noticed him at the dance myself. Now perceive the significance of those dead insects on the windowsill. The insects attracted last night by the reading lamp and shut in when Miss Goodwin closed the window. Indicating the murderer in the way the ant on the victim's grave I mentioned. I don't see it. All right, Miss Fraser. Oh. Miss Goodwin's alibi is indisputable, but we have only her word that the professor was in fact alive when she left him. Oh, he was alive. I didn't do it. I did kill him. Why should I? I was in love with him. Were you, Bella? You were in love with his money, yes. But it was really me you loved. How dare you say that? I must be mad. Whereas you, Mr. Emanuel, have an alibi until your return early this morning. I see. If Professor Russell died before me, but Miss Goodwin... And if he died in the early hours, then Mr. Emanuel did it. This is outrageous. And the fact that the insects were at the window when the poisonous gas killed him at the same time as Professor Russell... Because they were attracted to the window by the first light of daybreak. Look out! Kurt! He's making a run for it. Kurt! It was Kurt who did it. He was determined I shouldn't marry Hugo. That is a motive that springs to the mind. He had made himself believe that I loved him and not Hugo. Your car, Sergeant Hammond. He's getting into your car. Oh, quick. We must go after him. Oh, Dr. Morell, we can go after him in our car. I fancy, Miss Frey, we might leave that to the police. Not to worry, Miss Frey. Oh, what are you doing? Phoning Guilford to put out a general alarm but call. But he'll get away. Not very far in my car. Hardly any petrol left in the tank. I forgot to fill her up before I came out this morning. That was another adventure in a BBC series featuring Ernest Dudley's famous character, Dr. Morell, and, of course, his secretary, Miss Frail. The artists taking part were Dr. Morell, Cecil Parker, Miss Frail, Sheila Sim, Bella Goodwin, Maureen Risco, Kurt Emanuel, David Hurst, Hugo Russell, John Horsley, Sergeant Hammond, Hayden Jones, Mrs. Atkins, Elsa Palmer. This recorded program was produced by Leslie Bridgemont.